the nations desire peace, and that includes Germany and Italy. Yet when the Second World War started and Winston Churchill became Prime Minister, Beaverbrook's time had come again. The two men had been friends for more than 30 years. Churchill and Beaverbrook were drawn to each other. They were both sparkling conversationalists, enjoyed each other's company, both had tremendous command of the English language. And they were kindred spirits because they had many of the same friends. They didn't really like the Tory party and its old-fashioned Knights of the Shires and rather pompous country gentlemen. They were the buccaneers. In May 1940, Churchill brought the buccaneering Beaverbrook into the government as Minister of Aircraft Production. It was a critical job. The Battle of Britain was underway and Britain needed spitfires, a lot and fast. Beaverbrook was a pivotal figure in World War II and Beaverbrook rallied the aircraft production machinery of Britain like a sort of pirate, seizing factories, ordering people about. Um, he dispensed immediately with all the committees, saying, committees take the punch out of war, that was his phrase, I will run this myself. And everybody in the factories, in the supply chain, felt they had to get uh, Spitfires built, and they were built in the nick of time. Churchill had finally harnessed his great friend's restless energy. He would later write of Beaverbrook's time as a minister, this was his hour. His personal force and genius swept aside many obstacles. 